overall um, till the, the data that we presented at ASCO, till that data cutoff dead date, uh, we had enrolled um, over 168 patients in this four cohorts of newly diagnosed AML, untreated secondary AML, treated secondary AML, and relapsed refractory AML. The most important thing is that this regimen is very safe. The 30-day mortality in the entire population was 3%, and the 60-day mortality was 10%, and both the 30 and 60-day mortality in the newly diagnosed AML patients was 1.4%. In terms of um, toxicities, the most common treatment emergent adverse events included infections with grade three, four neutropenia, which occurred in 50% patients, and febrile neutropenia, which occurred in 29% patients. In terms of uh, outcomes, responses, uh, I think the most important uh, aspect uh, result of the study was that uh, this regimen led to very impressive CR, CRI rates in newly diagnosed patients. Uh, the overall response rate in the entire population was 74%. And uh, the CR, CRI rates in newly diagnosed AML was 84%. In untreated secondary AML was 67%. In treated secondary AML was 39% and in relapsed refractory AML was 42%. Uh, another important take home message from this trial was the high rates of deep remission, so MRD negativity by flow cytometry, and that was 67% uh, in newly diagnosed AML and 54% in relapsed refractory AML. Uh, and so one thing to keep in mind is that this is the first uh, prospective trial of Venetoclax and HMA in relapsed refractory patients. And the other important aspect of this trial was that this was the first trial to show the feasibility, safety, and efficacy of triplet therapy, uh, for example, combining FLIT3 inhibitors with this decitabine venetoclax backbone. And we, we amended the protocol to also allow IDH inhibitors and BCR-ABL1 TKIs as well. And um, that, that, that result we found in the flip mutant patients who, as we know, have very um, poor prognosis was uh, very encouraging. So in the newly diagnosed cohort, patients who had not received any treatment, uh, we had 10 patients who were treated with flip 3 inhibitors in conjunction with the cytobin and venetoclax. And the CRCRI rate in those patients was 100% with uh, eight of, of the 10 patients achieving CR. And MRD negativity by flow cytometry was 78%, and MRD negativity by NGS was 100%. And at a median follow-up of uh, over 15 months, the 18-month overall survival rate in newly diagnosed fit mutant AML was 83%, and uh, the CR-CRI duration at 18 months was 75%. Uh, in contrast, in uh, previous treated patients who had flip mutations, we had 12 patients who got the triplet therapy, so to speak. And um, this um, offered a bit more modest outcomes with CRCRI rate of 42% and median overall survival of 12.4 months. So I think um, these results will now provide um, leukemia physicians with data to, um, to be able to use uh, FLIT3 inhibition, FLIT inhibitors in combination with venetoclax and um, the cytobin in newly diagnosed and relapsed refractory patients. And this, these clinical results are particularly important because uh, we know from preclinical studies that there is synergy between uh, venetoclax and FLIT3 inhibitors. So this is something really encouraging for, the, for this adverse risk population. So that's in a nutshell um, some of the major findings uh, from this trial. The other post hoc analysis that we did, which was very encouraging, was that um, so although there is, there is some uh, myelosuppression with the tender regimen of uh, decitabin uh, that we used here in contrast with the 5 day decitabin regimen or the 7 day azacitidine regimen, which we saw in the initial trial of phenotoclax. Uh, however, um, you know, with, with necessary precautions, 
or crosstalk comparisons, um, the rates of neutropenic fevers are comparable between that phase one, two trial led by Dr. DiNardo with 5-DD cytobin or azacitidine and venetoclax and our 10-DD cytobin venetoclax trial. And uh, one place we think this regimen definitely has utility is in several subpopulations of relapsed refractory AML because we are seeing that if we can get them into a remission, we can bridge them to a stem cell transplant. And the outcomes after stem cell transplant are impressive. We had uh, close to 24 patients who proceeded to transplant and we had 100 day post transplant mortality of 0%. So in a nutshell, the take home messages are very high response rates um, in, in newly diagnosed patients, high rates of MRD negativity, a feasibility, safety, and efficacy of using triplet therapy with the three inhibitors, and um, you know the, the the possibility of being able to bridge relapsed refractory patients to stem cell transplant and thereby giving them long remissions.